Hello, everyone. In this afternoon session, we are going to be talking about grounding yoga poses that are helpful for anxiety. And we have a very special guest today, Daniela. Daniela is a classical Indian dancer and a yoga instructor from Italy. I am from India and I don't know how to do classical dance, so I am amazed at her. So I am Amita from Nourish Talk, a global platform for natural and holistic therapies. I'd like to introduce all of you to Daniela, who's joining us live from Los Angeles right now. Welcome, Daniela. Namaste, everybody. It's such a pleasure to be here with all of you. It's wonderful. Namaste, namaste. I, like I said, I am amazed that how you can do classic Indian classical dance, such a beautiful picture. I just could not resist. I had to put it out there. I know you are a yoga instructor, but this is so beautiful. So I wanted our viewers to take a look at, uh, you know, your beautiful picture. Um, Thank so, you. And, you know, I took those, that picture in India, in one of my, in one oh, of my, wow. is the jungle of India. So probably, I don't know if you're familiar with, with that, but being an Indian, person mm -hmm. you resonate with the, the setting <laughs> maybe in Kerala that's all I can say mm -hmm. it looks yeah. like it's in Kerala yeah right exactly yeah. exactly yeah yeah beautiful absolutely gorgeous uh, okay so we are actually the topic is the yoga asanas you know and then we are particularly talking about the grounding yoga poses and pranayama that can help with anxiety so so can we just get started on uh, you know what are the grounding yoga poses that that you recommend sure absolutely well first of all we have to say that both Indian classical dance and yoga are wonderful path to uh, find in ourselves calm and um, a sense of groundedness and sense of stability and nourishment. So these are very ancient practices and uh, both uh, are giving us an incredible uh, way to find ourselves uh, so uplifted and so connected with the ground. So when we think about the ground, we think about Mother Earth, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in India, especially, the ground is venerated as, as a divine mother, Bhumi Devi. Mm -hmm. So to be in connection with the ground uh, and to be stable and have that energy in our body, we have wonderful poses, we have wonderful asana, and also uh, practices uh, that can help us to get in that state that we can call groundedness, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there are different, different, of course, uh, asana, there are different uh, pranayama practices, there are different meditation that can help us to uh, embody a sense of stability, a sense of calmness. And of course, this is one of the great aim of yoga, um, but uh, I would say that one, uh, the first one that comes to my mind that I would like to share with you today and all our audience is Padmasana. Mm -hmm. You know, Padma means lotus mm -hmm. and uh, lotus uh, itself is a symbol of, of grace, of, of sitting in, in the grace. You know, the lotus... Uh, is connecting with the mud, right? The mm -hmm. roots are in the mud, but at the same time, it's so graceful and beautiful. Mm -hmm. And and that's the, the embodiment, the, the, the asana, the padmasana, is the sitting position when we are embodying the grace, the calmness, the, the, the mystical opening. So this one is the one of the first position that I would like to uh, bring in as a grounding practice, just sitting, sitting on a cross leg position with the, our spine straight and maybe uh, using a chi mudra, which is the first and the second finger united. Uh, there are healthy well, so now. Like that, chi mudra like that. Exactly. That's what exactly. So first you go of kind of like this and sit, you know, sit like a cross legged on your on exactly right. and, and this seems like so simple but uh yeah. in, it's actually so important to um cultivate that stillness 
the awareness of being sitting, being connecting with the ground and with our spine strains so that also there is an alignment on all our chakra energies and the prana, so the, the, the breathing, the air that is coming in and out is flowing freely. Mm -hmm. So uh, if uh, you try to sit in this position and, and hold the position with a very deep breathing and with your chi mudra, so uh, holding this, uh, this beautiful mudra that brings so much calmness, uh, this is already a, a extremely grounding position, extremely, uh, let's say even healing because mm -hmm. uh, we are finally stopping uh, from activities, from, from the grasping of, of moving and, and doing and performing in the sense of uh, trying to, to, to be in the action, but we are being in the stillness. So we are really connecting with the nourishing uh, energy of Mother Earth, of, of the Bhumi Devi. And I feel like in this position, we, uh, we are so supported. We are feeling supported. And when I uh, you know, do this, this asana, I always uh, connect with also the energy of the goddess. If you think about Lakshmi, for example, she sits on her Padmasana, on a lotus flower, mm -hmm. and she embodies this sense of groundiness, of, of trust in life, of safety, uh, of knowing that everything is fine. So that's for me is the asana of the the uh, queen asana, let's say, of being grounded. Of course, there is so much more because um, um, yoga is it's such a an oceanic wisdom, and and you know I'm so passionate about it. I love it so much, and that's why I've been traveling to your country, India, since more than twenty years. Oh my God. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. And I love yoga because um, it's really a vast wisdom. So we have, of course, other poses. And I would say um, uh, there are some uh, standing poses, for example, that they can bring a lot of sense of balance and groundiness. And I just want to mention, for example, what is called the tree pose. Mm -hmm. Let's say That's when we are like that, that one. You know, you exactly. yeah. yeah, so you are raising up your hands on the Namaste Mudra, which is already yeah. a very uh, important mudra of alignment. And with the body balancing either on one feet or the other, we are cultivating a green sense of equilibrium and stability and groundedness. So that's standing uh, asana. It's really suggested and... and um, um, practice to cultivate a great sense of calmness, groundiness, stability, firmness. And we could go ahead and ahead. Uh, of course, uh, there are a lot of uh, sitting position also that are uh, grounding, for example, even Baddha Konasana, when we are opening our knees, the right knees on the right side and the left knees on the left side. So just, oh, like that. Okay. Exactly, like completely open. Mm -hmm. um, so that's also another way to cultivate groundiness. Um, I would say that in general, my, my point of view, and this is personal, when uh, we are practicing yoga with a deep breathing, there is always, always a cultivation of being stable, balanced, grounded, connected, um, and, uh, and really in contact with our body and with our soul, of course. So um, it's, it's a great word for uh, all kind of yoga position, right? Mm -hmm. So what type of pranayama would you recommend for uh, with the, you know, you talked about the lotus position, you talked about, I forget the name of the asanas where you put your, uh, both the legs kind of like this when you lie down. Bada Konasana, Bada Konasana. Bada Konasana, okay. So I don't know the English uh, English word for Bada Konasana. I think they call it butterfly, 
right. butterfly okay butterfly pose okay so so maybe so I'll, I'll say butterfly pose where you where you lie down and you put both your legs kind of like on either side um so that's the butterfly pose uh, so what kind of pranayama would you recommend you know you uh, with with the with the tree pose with with the with the uh, butterfly pose uh, and uh, what would you recommend? And Padmasana, you talked about three asanas right now. Yeah. Uh, so pranayama is a wonderful, wonderful practice to uh, enhance our breathing and um, of course, bringing so much more calmness in the mind. And there are different kind of uh, pranayama to uh, bring uh, balance and stability. I would uh, suggest to use um, a nadi shodana, so uh, um, let's say uh, balance inhalation and exhalation from um, yeah. the right nostril, retaining and exhaling from the left left nostril yeah. and then the opposite. So. So I would say a simple, uh, let's say basic um, alternative uh, respiration. Yeah. yeah. Alternative and maintaining a very simple ratio of like five or ten breathing for each uh, for each part. So um, I would really start very simple, um, but also for advanced students, when you want to cultivate uh, grounding and balance uh, feeling uh, mm -hmm. and uh, body, of course, um, I would say this, um, you know, alternative nostril pranayama is uh, the most suggested. And, and okay. I can explain maybe a little bit more uh, for beginners or for people that they want to try. It's, it's a quite a simple technique, but it requires, again, it requires, first of all, to sit on a comfortable and stable position, strengthening up the spine and alternate the breathing. So uh, opening and closing the nostril, regulating. I use a mudra to do it. Uh, and inhaling from uh, one nostril, so inhaling from one side, for example, starting from the right, uh, and then retaining, and then exhaling from the left side, and then doing the opposite. So alternate that. This technique brings, um, helps, let's say, the practitioner, the student to uh, cultivate a sense of uh, calmness in the mind. Immediately, you will feel the result. And that's the greatness of the pranayama because mm -hmm. we are balancing our breathing. And so the mind immediately gets a sense of calmness. And of course, the body opens up. So uh, it's, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful mm -hmm. technique that um, I recommend for grounding and for, let's say, uh, managing stress, uh, even, um, you know, it's, it's, it's so simple. Uh, sometimes we forget about this ancient wisdom, but it's, it's so important and so helpful mm -hmm. in any, any, mm, in any moment, in any, in any situation, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, no, no, this is, I think this is a great, I mean, you talked about three different asanas that one can do for grounding exercises, Padmasana, the tree pose, and the butterfly pose, along with the uh, alternate nostril breathing. So at least these three, four simple techniques um, that, you know, we can do at home, we can do sitting, you know, actually not only sitting, but we can just, it just take five to 10 minutes to do these simple exercises that you talked about. Exactly, absolutely. And uh, it's really worth it to try to experience this and feel and uh, embody how, how simple it is to get in that uh, sense of quietness, of calmness, and, and um, it's so healing, really, very therapeutic. Yeah, beautiful. So, so how do you, so let's just come back to um, your dances, the beautiful, um, I mean, these are beautiful poses. Uh, so how do you incorporate dance with yoga? Hmm, it's a beautiful question, Amita. Is um, you know, both are our lifestyle to me. So 
Indian dance is, is a beautiful form of yoga, I would say, and yoga is totally integrated and support and uh, enhance my dance. So they really are going hand, hand by hand. They're going together and um, I can hardly think about my life without yoga or without Indian dance. I do really in integrate uh, both of them um, in, in my path. And, and they, um, they're really similar, like ultimately really they aim to the union with the divine, to the self-realization, they are sacred practices. Mm -hmm. And they are bringing so much uh, healing to the body and, and uh, they unite the mind. So they're, they're very, very, let's say similar in, in their ultimate goal. And um, they are also supporting, let's say, each other, or at least that what is um, what is true to me. Uh, so, for example, yoga, the practice of yoga with with the asanas and pranayama and the meditation gives to my body and to my mind a lot of strength, a lot of focus, concentration, all the calmness that I need in in my performances, for example. Mm -hmm. um and you know all, all, all the the breathing techniques are really helping my my performance my capability of being on a stage or or of being a dance teacher uh, yeah. i don't know if many of you know indian classical dance but it's a very strenuous uh it's an intense uh beautiful art of india it requires uh, it's quite demanding on the body. Uh, the training is it's very long and it's intense and it's beautiful, but it's uh, it's very deep. Uh, so uh, of course, yoga has come as a great support for my Indian dance. And on the other side, I feel that Indian dance gave to my yoga practice a lot of, um, let's say, a grace and uh, a lot of wisdom in understanding even better the mythology, uh, the, um, the spirituality, the philosophy that goes underneath both, both disciplines. So for example, uh, with Indian dance, we embody all the stories of Krishna and Radha and all the goddesses. And uh, that of course was, is, has been a beautiful integration for understanding all the philosophical aspect of yoga, the, devotion, the grace, and uh, the mythology, and, and uh, what is really yoga means, right? So that yoga is not just, let's say, a physical exercise, a gymnastic, it's uh, much more than that, so much more. So it kind of like, um, I would say they, they totally integrate, uh, almost melting in each other, and uh, enhancing each other um, properties and uh, beauty. And uh, uh, I would say uh, also added that they are both uh, very healing. Uh, they are medicine, mm -hmm. they are so therapeutic and there is so much transformation that happens in both that I can hardly look back at me 20 years ago and, and, and recognize myself because I'm, I feel like I'm a totally different person. I learn a lot and, and, and in and outside. Uh, so there, there is a lot of beauty. There is a lot of transformation. And I would recommend these, these practices to, to anybody really like um, it's, so special, so so powerful. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Daniela. No, I really appreciate that. Um, you know, these this is uh, really uh, making us understand and how beautiful you have infused. You know, classical Indian dance, being an Italian yourself, you didn't grow up with this, and and it's amazing that how you have infused this 
in your daily life or, or your life for that matter, you know, and, and yoga and dance is such a beautiful composition. So for all the viewers, you know, I think we, uh, I, I don't think all of us can dance as beautifully as you can. So, but, but, you know, but we can definitely try to do yoga, the yoga poses that you talked about, the three yoga poses, the butterfly, the Padma Asana and the tree pose, along with the pranayama, you know, alternate nostril breathing. So at least these three things we can exercise and at least try to feel calm and uh, less anxious that's the you know that's the takeaway message that i want to give to our viewers with that i'd like to wrap up this session thank you so much for being with us um really want to thank you thank you for your time and um yeah anything else you want to add before i wrap up uh thank you again for inviting me it has been a pleasure to to present these these practice and and to um share this with all of you and i would say yes uh, please uh practice and and, and mm -hmm. uh use this tool and and also uh you know if you want to try this uh practice i i feel that in everybody there is uh especially for women there is uh, a dancer and there is some beauty to discover and uh uh, you know, I'm ready to meet all my students where they are, and uh, so um, I encourage also to cultivate this beauty because I, I feel that it's important and there's so much wisdom and um, it's very, uh, it's very powerful. Uh, so I, I maybe hope to have opened a little door <laughs> to uh, be explored. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Thank uh, with you. All our, yeah, to all our viewers, please uh, help us share our sessions. Let, give us the feedback, how we are doing. We are bringing a lot of new topics every day on Insta as well as FB. So help us share these sessions. Thank you so much. Bye-bye now.